Hi there, uh, today we're gonna review Speak Easy. This small game is an adaptation of old Chinese game Lu Zan Kui, but brings you back in US 1920s in the famous time of Prohibition and the, the Speak Easies. You represent a clan of gangsters, you are the boss of them. You send them to town to figure out where is your opponent's Speak Easy before they figure out where is yours. This is an abstract game uh, where you have your pawns, wooden blocks uh, that you at the setup gonna put out on your side of the board. You have some restrictions though, you can look up in the rules. Uh, the wooden blocks have a, a picture of a gangster or a thug and a number uh, from 1 to 8. This is the strength of, of these pawns. So on your turn, you are gonna move one of your pawns one space. Uh, you have different spaces like here, like uh, alleys, streets, or buildings. Along streets, you can move uh, as many spaces as you want along the straight line. So you have different possibilities. Um, when you meet your opponent's wooden block, wooden pawn, you will compare the numbers by revealing these two wooden blocks. Whoever has the biggest one wins. The lower one is discarded. If you have the tie, both are discarded. There are some special uh, wooden blocks as well. You have kids, you have FBI and babe. Babes are really good. They scare away almost every pawn except the kids. And they also go away. FBI, the strongest one. FBI scares away all pawns. Doesn't matter whatever the pawn is. And the kid is very weak. Uh, he loses against almost every um, pawn except babes he can defeat babes. So that's the thing here. And what you want to do, you want to uh, find the location, you want to find the speak easy of your opponent. And the speak easy will be located on one of the two bars of your opponent's uh, side of the board. So it just basically whenever you encounter a speak easy with any pawn, one of your pawns, you win the game. That's basically the whole game. Component-wise, uh, this game is well done. I think uh, yes. you have a good-looking box here, uh, wooden blocks with uh, the prints on them that are, I think, quite uh, good quality. Yeah. The board itself, so everything looks good for that kind of small game, small easy game. Yeah, I would say that it's definitely it's a um, small game done right. Like the tiny things, they have the print and the small pictures. Perfect. Like just just black print, but it's it's really good. Mm -hmm. So it, well done on that yeah, part. Definitely. And it adds to the theme a yeah, little. Yeah, definitely. So um, I wouldn't say that the game is thematic. Well, it, oh, you don't feel the theme, though everything quite makes sense here. So you spread people around the town, uh, you try to invade the opponent, you try to outsmart him and bluff. The bluff and outsmarting opponent is the, the main thing and the coolest part in this game. You try to hide this like 50-50 chance that where you speak is you will be in one bar or another, but the way you place your blocks around one or another or the way you will move the blocks out from the space, from this, it's actually uh, it's really important because you will want to have a look what opponent does, which blocks he moves, which mm -hmm. which uh, part he will uh, uh, defend more, which one less. So it's really good bluff. Yeah, when you uh, also when two pieces struggle, mm -hmm. you reveal them, and for example, even if you will win. Uh, your uh, piece will be revealed and now your opponent knows what you have there and now you need to figure out how to go through that uh, strategy as well so there are a lot of things here that you can uh, you have to manage and the starting you can you can lock yourself you can lock your really good pieces by putting the pieces in the wrong spaces in the uh, setup so I think it it just uh, it's a smart game it's a really smart game and I would say actually the let's say setup of the game is quite important and interesting part of the overall game because this is perfect game when you finish the game and you'll say oh, okay I want actually uh, the return game because I know I didn't place my blocks well um, in the, my last game I ended up with 
good uh, good pieces to protect my speakeasy but I didn't have uh, pawns to move and reveal upon a speakeasy so it's exactly the place where you feel like oh damn I did wrong and yeah. you just hope that your opponent did the same so yeah uh, when we play and there are some other strategies uh, in my first play I blocked few good pieces I don't know why I just placed them somewhat randomly I didn't know what to do in the first game so you need to play it more than once to understand the game to like have uh, sometimes you have these teaching games you know mm -hmm. but you this time you need to learn game by playing it several times but it's easy it's fast it's like yeah. 30 20 minutes it's done and the rules are quite easy so you just go it's like abstract like chess and so on so you just go through this game once Oh, all right, now I know how to put the blocks, mm -hmm. now I'll go with, with the other one. So, I don't know, um, overlay. It's a really good, it's, uh, it was surprisingly good game for, for, let's say, for this type of game. Yeah. Um, I'm not a fan of these kind of games, um, and I was surprised that I really felt like, oh, I want to play once again. Like, I want to try now, because I'm smarter than how I will place the blocks. Mm -hmm. So it really leaves you the feeling like, oh, I need to discuss after that. Oh, why did you put that that way? Why did you block? Why did you move there? Or why didn't you like place uh, pawns? It's, it like creates lots of questions, mm -hmm. lots of discussions after that. I, I like some parts of this game as well where you are uh, bluffing your way. You can uh, uh, just take away all the defenses from your speakeasy. And the opponent thinks that uh, you don't have a speakeasy there because you took all the defenses away but then you still have it there. So it's like, a, I like that aspect of the game. I uh, like uh, the look of the game and how fast it goes. But for me, um, that's why I don't play chess uh, anymore. I have played chess so many times. Uh, I was really good at chess uh, in my childhood. But right now, um, I'm not like fan of that kind of game. So I cannot tell that I like the game, but I will not tell that this game is not good. This game, is good for what it is and I think it's a great game for couples who like abstract games I think who are fine with abstract games and who want to have good game in a short time so good yeah. gaming time in a short period of time yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's not a um, you know you, the thing is that you will uh, fight with each other that you will attack each other but it doesn't feel like you are attacking or killing your opponents or whatever you know it feels like you're just going through and you're discarding something you know and for the couples that don't like the um, this sort of uh, tension take of the, that and, take and that and, and, aggressive yeah games. aggressive that games be fun because you don't feel aggression there so not at all if you know if you know these couples so if, if you are one of them you should try this game definitely i think it's not as expensive as well the shops yeah no it should be so you should try to find this one out if it looks good for you. Uh, but we should then go to our final ratings, yes? Yep. Let's go. I give this game 6 out of 10. I give this game 6 out of 10.